Hello and welcome to part 116 of Let's Play Danganronpa. When we left off, Genocide had gone into a fight with Asahina. Ugami went mental. Kurugiri actually talked in front of Nagi, and then Ugami buggered off. So, what's happening now? Hold on, Sakura, wait. Asahina flew out of the infirmary chasing after Ugami, leaving just the two of us. I, I'm guessing it's not possible to just leave without talking to her. Hey, uh, Kirigiri? Are you still mad? You are, aren't you? I'm over it. Huh? As far as I'm concerned, that doesn't matter anymore. Then you forgive me for keeping it a secret? It is Ugami's conflict with Monokuma that you wouldn't tell me about. The reason you kept quiet is because you were concerned for, about Ugami. You wanted to talk to her first so you didn't end up inciting a panic by spreading unverified information. That was your thought process in refusing to tell me, wasn't it? Um, actually no. My thought process in refusing to tell you was tell her, tell her, tell her, tell her, tell her, tell her, tell her. It's not letting me tell her, don't tell her. Yeah. That degree of consideration is, con oh, is condescending, Nagi. Huh? I mean, in the end, it all boils down to one thing. You don't actually trust me. No, that's not true. But I guess it's only natural you think that. Sorry. It's fine, I'll just forget it ever happened. Besides, I did overact a little too. Huh? Anyway, what's done is done. Let's just forget about it. Yeah, thanks. Yay! I bet she's still pissed off. As far as I'm concerned, that doesn't matter anymore. I wanted to talk to you about something. What did you want to talk about, Kirige? I'd like you to accompany me somewhere. We, I have some business to attend to. Where's that? Come with me and you'll see. Well, yeah. We should get going. As always, Kirigiri walk, just walked off on her own, not even waiting for me, or any sign I was following. Hey, Kirigiri! I rushed off after her. Kirigiri walked in silence, and I followed in silence. And the place where we finally stopped was... Of course! Oh my god, you just left it out on the side all of that time? The dressing room? Are you kidding me? You just left it out on the side. Like, they could have just gone, Oh, everyone's in the dressing room all of the time. Let's send a Monokuma in there to check it out. And then they'd have seen the, video, the freaking laptop and been like, Oh, I wonder what this is. And then just clicked it on and then... All you'd have heard was the scream from Alter Ego, and then smashy smashy, and then nothing. I can't believe the mastermind is that freaking dumb. The dressing room? Then I'm guessing this has to do with... Yes, with Alter Ego. But you said we didn't have any more use for Alter Ego. I didn't say we didn't have any use for him. All I said was that his job was done. Anyway, it's not us who... It's not we who have business with him but he who has business with us. Huh. Alter Ego said he wanted to speak with a few of us. It seems he has a favour to ask. Alter Ego wants to ask us a favour. Alter Ego said he wanted to speak with a few of us. It seems he has a favour to ask. Alter Ego wants to ask us a favour. Okay, right, so you're just going to repeat that. Hello. Um, Akuge and Nagi the only two here. Akuge reached down and typed in a message. Is two su insufficient? No, not at all. Two is plenty. I wonder what he wants us to do. Let's find out. The fingers glided across the keyboard as she typed in another message. You said you had a favour to ask? 
I do, yeah. Um, well, I'd like you to bring me somewhere I can connect to the local network. What? Kiki okay, and I exchanged su surprised glances. Just moments later, she had begun typing her response. For what purpose? Well, you see, you guys said my job was done, right? But for it to just end there, for me not to be able to do anything else, that's not good enough for me. I want to help you guys somehow. Anything I can do to bring everyone closer to a way out of here, I want to do it. That's what my lord said we... My lord would have wanted. I want to help. I want to uncover the academy's mysteries. And the only way I can do that is by connecting to the school's network. But that's... that's basically a suicide mission. There's no way the puppet master wouldn't, won't find out. And when he does, he'll take the laptop from us. Am I right, Kirigay? I know it's risky, but I have to do it. I'm scared, but I'll, I'll be okay. It's kind of weird. When I remember I'm doing this for your sake, it gives me a burst, burst of courage. I'm sure you're thinking what's he talking about, he's just an AI, but it's true, honest. I'll be okay. I'm doing this for all of you, so I'm not afraid of, of anything. All of a sudden, I found myself entranced by his voice. His powerful, determined, courageous, brave, frail, transient voice. Hey Nagy, remember when you asked about the difference between humans and computer programs? Yeah? That's good. The more time I spend with Alter Ego, the more of that line seems to blur. There's no longer a question I know how... That's no longer a question I know how to answer. I doubt even Fujisaki, who wrote this program, would be able to tell you the difference. But there is one thing I can say. Alter Ego is, without a doubt, our friend. Kugiri. To be honest, I don't want to put him in any more danger. You're right, the Puppet Master probably will catch on if we push our luck any further. Still, let's lend him our aid, Nagy. Let's connect him to the school network. But, as his friend, I also want to consider his feelings. His drive to fight alongside us. Think about it this way, if you were in his position, and could you just sit around twiddling your thumbs? While everyone else was fighting for their lives, could you just sit back and watch from the sidelines? Would you be proud of yourself for doing so? Could you stick out your chest and say from the bottom of your heart that we were in this together? Are you guys arguing? You don't need to worry about me. I want to believe in myself. I want to believe that I can do this. So please, let me try. Thinking about it, that might be some place that the Puppet Master wouldn't catch wind of. Where? Think about it, there's one room other than this dressing room where there aren't any security cameras. The other room without security cameras is... The Hidden Room. Right, yeah, the Hidden Room on the second floor you told me about before. As I recall, there weren't any cameras there. In addition, you should also be able to connect to the network from there. I remember seeing an output for network cables in that room too. However, no cameras does not necessarily mean no risk. There's no telling whether or not the Puppet Master is monitoring the network too. Besides, even if we can keep Alter Ego out of sight, there's no getting into the room without him knowing. If he senses anything fishy there, it's game over. You're right. Regardless, I still think we should give him the chance. I mean... That's not the only option we have to find any new leads. Kirigiri, will you let me carry Alter Ego? I'll hide him in my uniform. I mean, we, we couldn't have you carrying him around in your clothes, right? I would appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Then let's begin, shall we? It's going to be a little cramped in there, but you'll just have to bear with us for a little Alter Ego. We got to work right away. Kyrie closed the laptop's lid, and I slipped folder, the folded computer up under my shirt. That tickles, I think. Shh, you can't talk. I'm going to take you somewhere, and until we get there, you absolutely can't make a peep. Understood. Order's confirmed. Alright. That threw me off balance a little. Him suddenly sounded all machine-like. Nagy. There was a bundle of cables inside the desk drawer in the hidden room, which means there could be an network cable in there too. 
That is assuming the puppet master didn't take it. All we can do is go and find out for ourselves. Indeed, let's go. All righty then. Enter the school zone we go. I'd be really interested to see how many different voices I've done over the course of this. Hey, yeah, okay. Whoa, Nags, what's wrong? Why are you so jumpy? Nothing's wrong, dude. Like anything would be. Ha 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 ha. He's acting kind of funny. Well, I guess that's par for the course with a Hagakure. Well, I'm out of here, dudes. Going back to my room. Catch you later. Well. Okay then. Oh, hello, Genocider. What have you got for us? Right. Um. Okay. It's the very latest Genocraze. Right. What are you doing? Living. Ah. Uh, I'll be in my room quietly living it up. Okay. I'm gonna have nightmares from that. Which is saying something, because usually I just have nightmares about being trapped in a place and murders happening. Yeah, this was probably not the greatest game to play, was it? Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. Actually, since I've been playing this, I've had less nightmares. They're like the oddest thing ever, isn't it? Hold on. Oh, it's back there, aren't they? I walked past them in my talk about nightmares. Naggy. Did all those documents really just vanish? I don't buy it. Go back in there and check again. And do a thorough job of it. What? Go. Now. I'll be standing guard right here to make sure you don't try and run away. I get it. This is a performance. Almost thought she was actually mad at me again. Don't just stand there. Get going. Alright. I got it. I'll be back in a bit. That's more like it. I'm counting on you. So, let's get moving. I think we're very shortly going to have another murder victim. So it's either going to be this episode or the next episode. I reckon. I think. Alright, first I've got to find a network cable. Which is probably going to be in here. Yuri said I'd be able to find the cables. I'd, be, I'd find cables in the drawer here. Let's see. Bingo. And here's my network cable. All that's left is to pull alter, alter ego into the school network. I got to work. I got straight to work. I removed the laptop from my uniform and set it on the desk. Then I plugged it into the network port. That about does it. Hmm. Great, it looks like this will work. Leave the rest to me. I'll find something. I just know I will. I might even be able to find... I might even be able to contact the outside and call for help. So just hang in there. Believe, me in, believe in me and hang in there. Before leaving the hidden room, I left one last short message for him. Let's all get out of here together. You, me, everyone. Friends until the end. Hold on. Once again? Why did you just leave him out? No. Put him in one of the drawers. Are you completely retarded? Ugh, God. We're friends? You really consider me a friend? Thanks. Thank you, Nagy. Alrighty. And? Um, yeah, it went fine. Everything really was gone. The answer ca that came out was an awkward mishmash of reflexive honesty and performance. I see. In that case, there's nothing we can do. We no longer have any business here. Yeah. So long. And just like that, Kirigiri marched off, no performance, no nothing. Hey, Kirigiri! Yeah. Yes? 
Um, are we just gonna split up here? Why wouldn't we have no reason to be with you anymore? Well, sure, I guess, but I mean, isn't that a little too sudden? What, do you want me to bemoan our parting? You're un unexpectedly high maintenance, Nagy. That's not what I'm saying. Just, you know, I'd like to get your thoughts on some things, like the situation with Ogami. Obviously something's going to need to be done. But at this stage, it'll be impossible to sway anyone. Nobody's willing to listen. Then, what should we do? I'm certain new information will be able to change people's attitudes. We'll just have to wager on that. Which is what Alter Ego is here for. All we can do right now is wait and have trust in our friend. Yeah, she's exactly right. That's all, all we can do. After parting ways with Kirigiri, I return to my room for a little. I'm kind of beat. As I said that, I collapsed into my bed. Transporting Alter Ego had done a number, of, a number on my nerves. I was much more tired than I thought. Within seconds, I... Blacked out? I dozed off. dot da dot da dot da dot dot da dot da dot da dot ding dong Okie dokie. Hmm? Ding dong. Again, teetering on the edge of sleep, I was brought back to reality by the sound of a doorbell. Usually when that happens, to me, I'm brought back to reality by my neighbors. I have one either on one side, playing mowing the lawn, or on the other side, making shit tons of noise. Come with me, Nagy. What's the matter, Kirigiri? Just a few seconds ago, Asahina came looking for me. Her face was deathly pale. It seems something has happened. Something? That word set an alarm in the back of my mind. Just like that, consciousness flooded back to me. She told me to go to the rec room. The rec room? Alright, let's hurry. Um, Asahina? Nagi, Kirigiri, what's wrong, Asahina? Something's wrong with her. In the rec room. In the rec room? I rushed over to the rec room door and looked in through the window, and there I saw... Ugami? Is she unconscious? She was sitting upright, but slightly hunched over. What's going on? What happened to Ugami? I was just passing through, and I happened to see Sakura through the window, but the door wouldn't open. I found on the door and called for her, but she couldn't seem to hear me. What do we do? What should we do? First, we need to find a way into the, re into the room. It sounds like the door's locked, so we can't break in without breaking the rules. We're breaking down the door. But I just said, it's not locked. The rec room doesn't have a lock. Huh? Then why won't it? Something must be pressed up against it from inside the room. Perhaps a chair. A chair? Regardless, this door isn't locked, so the school's, school rules don't apply. So we can break down the door without causing any problems. The fastest way is going to be by breaking, be breaking the window. I'll, get, I'll go get something. Wait here. Dude, now he is a guy. He can just put his elbow for it. Ugami remained motionless inside the rec room. She's unconscious, isn't she? There's nothing to worry about, is there? I mean, this is Ugami we're talking about. Kirigiri's response was silence, but the silence only held for a brief moment. I got something. There was a broom in the classroom over there, here. Can you handle this, Nagi? Please, hurry. Alright, you two get back. I swung the broom over my head and brought it back down on the window with all my might. Really, you want to be doing more of a thrusting motion to be getting the broom in. You know, the window shattered inwards as the harsh sound of breaking glass assaulted my ears. I reached my hand in through the, door, through the hole and attempted to move the chair in front of the door. This is one heavy chair, but I think I can. I shoved the chair with all my might, finally freeing the doorknobs. Ugami. 
and ran to her side. The moment my hand made contact with her skin. Oh, it seems she isn't unconscious. Well, she isn't conscious, but she's not unconscious in the conventional terms. Because Eggie felt death. Only the tiniest bit of warmth remained. But all the life had drained from her. Couldn't she have just gone and walked into a freezer? I'd love to freak someone out like that. Just go and walk into one of those freezers, get really, really cold. And then just go and just lay in a chair and just pretend to be dead. Freak everyone out. It'd be amazing. And then... We got a corpse here. We'll be holding a class trial pretty soon, so make good t use of the time you've got. LZ. All, all apologies. Everyday life. And that's part two of the chapter, I think. What? I think it should give me a save point. Sakura is... Sakura is... dead? She's dead? I could hear Asahina's trembling voice behind me, but my eyes were frozen on a single point. The body before me, Ugami's dead body. It looks like we're too late. It, it's happened again. Speaking through clenched teeth, Kirigiri placed her hand on Ugami's corpse. It looked like she was confirming her death, checking for a pulse or a reaction or something. I gotta go get them. Gotta go get everyone else. Asahina staggered out of the rec room, and I... Wh why? Why did this have to... Could do nothing more but mumble. Just mumble the same thing over and over again. I'm going to need to examine Ugami's body. Kirigiri examined her body, I could do nothing but stand back and stare, bolted to the floor. Time passed. To find out what happened after the time passed. Actually, no, because it's gonna freaking... Right, it's gonna finish soon. Time continued to flow, and I continued to helplessly be helplessly frozen in place. It's got to end soon. It's got to just bring up that save point. I'm pretty sure it brings up a save point. Does it bring up a save point? I can't remember it anymore. A while later... I brought them. What? Ogre? Well, looky here. Big girl's gone bye-bye. I see. Ugami's been murdered. Once the final three had arrived, Kirigi began speaking. As I'm sure you heard, the corpse discovery announcement was just made. You know what that means, don't you? That Sakura Ugami was murdered by someone in this room. Am I misunderstanding? No. It wasn't just someone in this room. Sakura was killed by... I create Ugami of Fukua, one of you three. What? You sound awfully certain for not having any done any investigation. I don't need to investigate anything, I just know. I mean, come on, you guys all acted like Sakura was the bad guy. So obviously one of you three killed her. You already know who did it? Don't tell me. You're one of those earthlings who unleashes super detective powers when you're angry. What did you want? Oh, Asahina, you so silly. I'm here to make a special delivery for next issue of the Homicide Today, otherwise known as the Monokuma File 4. You ain't done right by your bombastic face by wearing that angry scowl, Asahina. Well, got a blast. Just a second. There's something I'd like to know. Yes? You didn't kill Ugami, did you? Yes, yes? She did... She said she intended to do battle with you with the Puppet Master. Maybe you two got into another fight and then you killed her? Hmm, ni neither close nor cigar. Nope, you're totally off base. I'm sorry to say it, but Ugami died a pitiful death before even reaching the boss room. Thankfully, though, that means I got off easy. No need to accept her challenges anymore. Because really, a monster like her ain't so easy to take down, even for a monocume of a great. I was at a loss. 
There she is breaking the rules by attacking me, and here I am unable to claim my restitution. So whoever you are, Mr. or Miss Villain, you have my deepest gratitude. Gratitude? Rather than directing your anger at me, you should follow into, into finding the culprit. After all, it's you guys' lives on the line here. What the heck, you're grateful? You sickened me, mon you monster. I can agree with him on one point. I'm glad it was all it was Ugami. She was the puppet master's mole, after all. How could you say that? Oops, I don't have time to bicker with you peons. The game's already begun. You need someone to hate, hate whoever killed her. Our number one priority right now should be finding the culprit. If we don't, we'll all be executed. First, we'll decide who's responsible for watching over the crime scene. I'll do it. Asahina? I'll be fine. Let me handle it. Anyway, how want to be here with Sakura? Alright, then Asahina, you're the first watchman. The second is... You, Kirigiri. Me? You're always getting in my way. This time you can be a good little girl and stand guard. That's an order. An order? That's fine. I'll stay here. Then it's settled. Let's get started. Wait. There's something I have to say first. And what might that be? I carry to Gami and Fukua. The three of you are not allowed in this room. Huh? You're the ones who killed Sakura. I can't let any of you get anywhere near her. Shut your mouth, insolent fool. My life is at risk. I have a right to investigate the scene. Say whatever you want. I'm not letting you murderers touch Sakura. I won't let you in, even if I have to drag you out myself. It seems like an impasse. Continuing this quarrel any longer is just a waste of time. But I'll make a concession. Never mind all three. Just let me investigate. What? It's not a problem, is it? It's not like you'd be of any help anyway. Cool with me. Investigation path. Fabulously fantasizing about my white knight is a much better use of my time. You don't have any complaints either, do you, Hikari? Well, if you insist, I guess I got no choice. I have a way, dude. It's not like I did anything. It's decided. Who gave you permission to decide anything? Asahina, I understand how you feel right now, but you'll really need to accept Ogami's proposal. But we have to find the murderer. Not only for our own sakes, but for Ogami's as well. Fine, I'll let you investigate for room Tagami. But you absolutely cannot lay a finger on Sakura. And why would I? I'm not putting my hands on that filthy thing. Enough of a bickering already. We need to focus on investigating this murder now. You would do well to keep that in mind, everyone. But if we don't find the murderer, every last one of us will be killed. It's not a question of whether we want to or not. Only our, chan our only chance of making it through this alive is to uncover the killer responsible for Ugami's death. Desperate hope, but our only hope. And I think that's the official end of part one. Investigation. First off, let's see what the Monokuma file has to say. See what the Monokuma file has to say and see me investigating. Join me for the next episode. I know this episode ran way too long, but I had to wait until like a finishing point for, you know, a definite point. So. Next episode on the top right. The previous is on the top left. So, until next time, folks. See ya.